I'm Kevin from Bake Boss, and today I'm going to show you in a few easy steps how I take this raw isomalt and turn it into a medium that I can then heat up in the microwave and cast in or on silicon moulds. So bear with me, and I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Alright, so this is what I'm going to use to prep my isomalt. I've got a non-stick frying pan, I've got some silicon paper, not grease proof, I've got a couple of Ziploc bags to store my isomalt in after I've prepped it, I've got a small chopping board to protect my bench from the hot sugar. I've got a brownie tray, a digital thermometer. I've got 500 grams of our Bake Boss isomalt crystals, a small Pyrex jug for reheating our isomalt after we've prepped it so that we can pour it into our silicon molds, 30 mils of cold water, and over there I've got some electric blue airbrush color. Now you can use gels as well. Today I'm using this one. That's pretty much it, so bear with me as I take you through it. Cheers. Okay, so I'm taking my isomalt now that's just come off the stove. I've just let the bubble subside and let it cool down before I do anything. And I'm just going to pour it straight onto my silicon paper lined tray. So I've got the chopping boards underneath it and a tea towel under here as well just to protect my bench. And you can see that it pretty much just sort of falls freely from your non-stick cookware. Okay, so while I'm waiting for this to cool, and it'll probably take about half an hour, I'll just talk about some safety precautions that you need to consider when you're doing uh, isomalt work. Now, I always, if I was gonna do this at home, I'd always make sure that my pets were outside and that there was no children in the kitchen or I've got another adult looking after them in there because if they were to run into the kitchen and knock the pan off, off the stove, then, then it's a hospital visit. Now, we're reaching 165 degrees Celsius with this, so what I do, is I keep a small bowl of ice water always on hand so that if I do get a splash or a dot, I can just plunge my hand into this straight away. Uh, it seems like overkill, but seriously, it, it, it can save you a trip to the doctors. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to make you aware that this stuff gets very, very hot. Uh, another thing to consider too is make sure that your pot handles are turned right the way around. We don't want to knock them, bang them, or have any mishaps on the stove top either. Okay, this is a little fish tank decoration that I purchased from the pet store, and I thought to myself that would look really, really good in isomalt. In fact, I could probably almost replicate the same exact look. So what it is, I took my decoration, and I took my Bake Boss two-pot silicon putty mix. So part A, part A, and part B. You mix them together until they're homogenized and they're one color. This is white, this is blue, so it's easy to tell when they're mixed together. And all I did was I pushed the putty over the form and the form fits perfectly in there now the one thing that you need to bear in mind is now I knew I was going to be using this for isomalt I knew I was going to be handling something hot so I just pushed the putty back over the edge of the mold so that I created you can see that I created that lip just there can you see that lip and that means that when I pour the isomalt in and I'm moving it around like that, there's less chance of any isomalt coming over the side and going onto my hands. Even though it's only going to be between 180 degrees Celsius, I still don't want to scold myself. So yeah, just if you can put a little ridge on them if you're going to be using it for isomalt, uh, it pays too. So again, another great product from Bake Boss, two pot Bake Boss silicon putty. Okay, while that's still a little bit warm, I'm just going to reach in and just break it into usable size pieces. Oop. Still warm, so it's a little bit of a bend to it. Just like that. And now I'm going to place those pieces into my Ziploc bag. Now these will last for months and months and months like this. So there you go. Expel some of the air if you can. Zip it up. And there you have it. Isomalt that's ready to use when you need it. 
I've just taken my isomalt that I've broken up and I've just popped it into a small Pyrex jug. I'm going to put this in the microwave now, 30 second increments until it's all melted in on itself. So you can just see there that it has started to melt. So I'm going to pop it back in again for another 30 seconds. Okay, so you can see that now is all melted. It's quite thick. It's certainly not as hot as it was when we made it. I've got my bowl of ice water waiting for me right there in case I have any accidents. And I'm just going to take my mould and I'm just going to pour some of the ice mould into the cavity. I'm going to pick up my mould now and very carefully, and this is what I was talking to you about before, you notice that that rim there is just stopping that ice mould rolling down the side. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there. I'll try and turn it around so you can see it. I'm just letting it fill the cavity. So I'll keep going with that and come back to it in a second. So another thing that you can do with your ice mold that's nice and easy, I've just got a lace mat here sitting on a chopping board and if I put my thumb on the end of the, chopping, uh, the lace mat and lift up the chopping board, and you can see that I'm actually lifting and pivoting on the chopping board. It means I don't have to touch the isomalt and get my hands anywhere near it. I'm just going to take some liquid isomalt now and I'm just going to pour it along the mat like so. And I'm just going to lift up, if you can see that, lift it up and let it run down the mat and you get this really cool drippy effect. Now I'm just going to let that one a little bit longer. I'm going to let it go back a little bit just so that it thickens up the base. And I'm just going to leave that to set up as well. Just adding in another layer of drips. I've got an old bucket here that I've laid on its side and I'm just going to pick up my isomalt on my silicon mat and lay it inside the bucket like that. It means that when it sets, it's going to set with a curve in it. And there you have it, isomalt. I took both pieces of isomalt out of these silicon moulds when they'd cool, went back in with some white gel and painted some snow, used some rainbow dust metallic blue in the foreground of the castle, also dropped two strands of Bake Boss uh, LED lights in, some blue behind the castle, some white behind the mountains. Great little cake topper, translucent, and really just pops when you turn the lights on. There you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. We've taken you from prepping your isomalt to actually using it at its most basic form, which is just casting. Um, and yeah, so good luck and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Thank you.